Link, The Faces of Evil and Zelda, The Wand of Gamelan are two action-adventure video games developed by Animation Magic and published by Philips Interactive Media for the CDI. The two games were released on the same day, were developed simultaneously, and look and play similarly because they use the same graphic engine. A third Zelda game released for the CDI, Zelda's Adventure, featured a different developer and perspective than its predecessors. Link, The Faces of Evil puts the player in control of Link, who goes on a quest to defeat Ganon and rescue Princess Zelda. Zelda, The Wand of Gamelan reverses the roles and has the player control Zelda, who goes out to save Link and defend her kingdom from Ganon. Both travel to a new world, Korodai and Gamelan, respectively, to thwart Ganon's plans. At the time of their release, the games received mixed to positive reviews. In later years, however, both games, along with Zelda's Adventure, have become infamous with modern critics, which has led to the three games to be considered among the worst video games ever. <laughs> Gameplay Players take control of Link in the faces of Evil and Zelda in the Wand of Gamelan. In the beginning of both games, players have access to only three areas which are accessed through an in-game map. The two characters only have their swords and shields at this stage. The sword can be used to attack enemies either by stabbing or shooting power blasts, while the shield can deflect attacks. The shield is used whenever the player character is standing still or crouching. They gain new items later on in the game including lamp oil, rope, and bombs which can be purchased at a shop. Rubies, rupees in canon Zelda games, can be obtained by stabbing them with the sword after defeating an enemy, after which they can be spent at the shop. The player's health is measured in life hearts. Although the player begins the game with only three hearts, there are ways to earn more. Each time the player character is injured, they will lose at least one half of a heart. The first two times the player character runs out of life hearts, the player will be given the option of continuing from near the point where their last heart was lost. When the player character loses their hearts for a third time, they will be returned to the map and the player will have to start the level from the beginning. Returning to the map replenishes their life hearts and lives and they will retain any items and rubies they picked up. Topic. Plot Topic. Link, the faces of evil The story begins in Hyrule Castle, where a bored Link the series protagonist discusses the prospects of new adventure with King Harkonnen. Soon, Link's hopes are fulfilled, as a wizard named Guanam arrives on a magic carpet, telling them that Ganon the series antagonist and his minions have taken over the island of Korodai. Although King Harkonnen immediately offers aid, Guanam explains that according to a prophecy, only Link can defeat Ganon. Link is transported to Korodai and Guanam shows him the fabled island's giant stone statues, known as the Faces of Evil, which Link must conquer. During Link's time in Korodai, Princess Zelda is kidnapped by Ganon and imprisoned in his lair, questing to rescue the princess and to liberate Korodai. Link is sent by the Ice Queen to Fortress Centrum to retrieve the treasure of death. At the fortress, Link finds what appears to be a sleeping Zelda. Once awakened, however, the figure transforms into Goronu, a shapeshifting necromancer who works for Ganon. After defeating Goronu, Link retrieves the Crystal of Reflection, which allows his shield to reflect curses. Link then proceeds to defeat Ganon's minions, which include the revived Goronu, the anthropomorphic pig Harlequin, the armored pyrokinetic Militron, the three-eyed wolf Lupe, and the gluttonous Cyclops Glutko, the last from which the Book of Koridae is retrieved. A translator named IPO reveals that the book itself is enough to defeat Ganon. After trekking through Ganon's lair, Link finally reaches him. He attempts to recruit Link with the promise of great power and the threat of death upon refusal. After the ensuing battle, Link imprisons him in the Book of Korodai and then awakens the sleeping Zelda. Guanam appears and congratulates Link on imprisoning Ganon. He shows the two a rapidly recovering Korodai and declares Link the island's hero. However, Zelda refuses to kiss him as a reward. Topic: <inaudible> Zelda: The Wand of Gamelan. 
King Harkinian announces his plan to aid Duke Onkeld of Gamelan possibly named after Camelot with the first and last letters changed when the latter falls under attack by Ganon, and orders Zelda to send Link for backup in case she does not hear from him within a month. A month passes without word from the king, so Zelda sends Link to find him. Unfortunately, he too goes missing, so Zelda ventures off to Gamelan accompanied by her elderly nursemaid Impa to find both Link and the king. During Zelda's time in Gamelan, Impa discovers that King Harkinian has been captured, and that Link has engaged in a battle, the outcome of which is unclear. As she adventures across the island, Zelda meets many friendly characters and battles with many monsters and enemies including the villains Gibdo, a mummy, an iron knuckle, a heavily armored knight. Along her travels, Zelda battles the sorcerer Wizrobe to free Lady Alma, who gives Zelda a canteen that she claims Link gave her in exchange for a kiss. On reaching Duke Onkeld's palace, Domodai Palace, it is revealed that Duke Onkeld has betrayed the king and is working for Ganon. Zelda storms the palace, kills Ganon's minion Hecton, and saves an imprisoned Spaniard named Lord Kiro, sometimes known as Fari, who used to work for King Harkinian. Kiro reveals the secret entrance to Onkeld's chamber, and when they confront him, he reveals the entrance to Risong Palace, where Ganon has taken residence. Zelda travels to the shrine of Gamelan to defeat the head switching Chimera Mfak and obtain the wand needed to defeat Ganon, and she also visits Nokani Forest to obtain the magic lantern needed to clear the darkness around Ganon. Finally, at Risong Palace, Zelda fights Ganon, incapacitates him with the wand, and rescues her father. Back at Hyrule Castle, Duke Onkeld is turned over to the king, begging for mercy. He is arrested and the king orders him to scrub all the floors in Hyrule as punishment. Although Link's whereabouts are still unknown, a comment by Lady Alma prompts Zelda to throw her mirror against the wall, and as it smashes, Link magically materializes, seemingly having been trapped in the mirror. They begin laughing, as all is well once again. Topic. Development Topic. Conception In 1989, Nintendo signed a deal with Sony to begin development of a CD-ROM-based system known as the Nintendo PlayStation, or the SNES CD to be an add-on to the Super Nintendo Entertainment System that would allow for FMV and larger games. However, Nintendo broke the agreement and instead signed with Philips to make the add-on, which caused Sony to spin off their add-on into its own console called the PlayStation. Witnessing the poor reception of the Sega Mega CD, Nintendo scrapped the idea of making an add-on entirely. As part of dissolving the agreement with Philips, Nintendo gave them the license to use five of their characters, including Link, Princess Zelda, and Ganon, for games on Philips's console, the CDI. After the partnership's dissolution, contracting out to independent studios, Philips subsequently used the characters to create three games for the CDI, with Nintendo taking no part in their development except to give input on the look of the characters based on the artwork from Nintendo's original two titles and that of their respective instruction booklets. Philips insisted that the development studios utilize all aspects of the CDI's capabilities, including FMV, high-resolution graphics, and CD-quality music. Because the system had not been designed as a dedicated video game console, there were several technical limitations, such as unresponsive controls especially for the standard infrared controller, and numerous problems in streaming audio, memory, disk access, and graphics. The first two games were showcased at the 1993 CES and surprised audiences with their degree of animation. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Budget and design. The Faces of Evil and The Wand of Gamelan were the first two Nintendo licensed games released on the Philips CDI. They were given the relatively low budget of approximately $600,000 and the development deadline was set at a little over a year. Time which would have to be split between the two games. It was decided by Animation Magic, the Cambridge, Massachusetts-based development team led by Dale de Heron, that the two games would be developed in tandem and would share the same graphics engine to more efficiently use the budget. The rest of the development team included three programmers, all previous employees of Spinnaker Software, one musician, Tony Trippi, and freelance writer Jonathan Merritt, who created the scripts and designs. 
Under de Charwan's direction, game development progressed similarly to that of his earlier directed title, Below the Root, a game which retro gamers John Chapaniak has suggested may have served as a forerunner of sorts. Background designs were created by local Cambridge artists. IGN's Pierre Schneider claimed that the decision to star Zelda in The Wand of Gamelan was based on the fact that the CDI's library was directed at women. However, he felt that they failed at this due to Zelda playing the same role as Link. Topic: <laughs> Animation. The animated cutscenes were created by a team of four animators from Russia, led by Igor Razbov, who were flown to the United States for the project. These games marked the first time that Russian outsourcing had been utilized by an American company, a move that was only possible due to the somewhat thawed political climate after the fall of the Berlin Wall. <laughs> Voice acting For voice acting, Animation Magic auditioned local AFTRA actors. This section contains the voice actors with their identified characters. Reception Contemporary responses At the time of its release, contemporary criticism was largely positive to mixed for both games. SNES Force magazine described the animated sequences as breathtaking and praised the game for its high-resolution graphics and its brilliant use of sound and speech. Highly anticipated by the French video game press, Joystick magazine's development preview of The Faces of Evil described it as a veritable arcade-quality game with stunning graphics and perfect animation. They gave The Wand of Gamelan similar praise and gave it additional praise for its use of voice acting, its plot, and its backgrounds. The same magazine would ultimately score The Faces of Evil 79%, a few months later, giving particularly high marks for music, sound effects, and play-through time. Other publications gave more negative reviews. CDI Magazine rated The Faces of Evil 65%, stating that the game was a poor relation to the original Nintendo games, and singling out the perfunctory storyline, the lack of graphical features like parallax, and the slow and repetitious gameplay. Another reviewer for the magazine gave The Wand of Gamelan a higher 75% and called it a reasonably good game for its puzzles and animated sequences. He however criticized its plot and controls. In 1994, Edge reported that as CDI sales began to suffer, criticism sharpened and the games were described as low-cost, low-risk ventures that had failed to excite any interest in the platform. Re-evaluation and infamy Wired magazine said that the animation in both games was extremely simple and stilted and that the graphics had several glitches. The designers were criticized by IGN's Travis Fass for using a style similar to Zelda II, The Adventure of Link for the games and for insufferable controls and the designers' poor understanding of the Legend of Zelda franchise. He noted, however, that the backgrounds looked decent considering the poor design of the CDI's hardware. IGN's Pierre Schneider criticized the Wand of Gamelan for not doing well to indicate when a platform begins or ends, and also said its controls were sloppy. The game's animated cutscenes and voice acting in particular drew criticism. The Star Tribune described the voice acting as laughable, and it was also criticized by Zelda Elements as jarring. IGN described the cutscenes as infamous and cheesy. Other reviewers described them freakish and an absolute joke. IGN's Pierre Schneider felt that the cutscenes in The Wand of Gamelan were entertaining for all the wrong reasons. The game's soundtracks drew mixed responses. Zelda Elements felt it was average and not up to the usual Zelda quality, while IGN described the soundtrack as Red Book Audio CD Pop. However, this has been contested by other reviewers, who described it as diverse, high quality, and superb with an adventurous upbeat tempo blending. Delicious 80s synth. Electric guitar, panpipes, marimbas, and other unusual instruments. Despite the largely negative reception that the games have received, there have been a few positive reviews as well. 
both Danny Cowan of OneUp.com and John Shapaniak of Hardcore Gaming 101 praised Faces of Evil and Wand of Gamelan as among the best games on the CDI. Shapaniak in particular suggested that several of the magazines that had rated and reviewed Wand of Gamelan and Faces of Evil had engaged in hate campaigns having never even played the game. Their praises drew from the game's detailed, well-drawn in-game backgrounds which was described as both Gigaresque and Monet-esque and pretty decent gameplay, although both criticized the controls. According to Shapaniak, the game's controls work best when played with a hardwired three-button CDI control pad, as opposed to the CDI's cruddy infrared remote. In a periodical for Retro Gamer magazine, Shapaniak identified the natural comparison of the games by reviewers to the quality of games in the rest of the Zelda series as an improper comparison to make, and suggested that when reviewed in their own right, the games were actually excellent. Contrary to what were described as lies perpetuated about faces of evil and wand of Gamelan, Retro Gamer described the games as astoundingly good, and rated them together as number 10 in its perfect 10 games for CDI. While acknowledging that they lacked canonicity, they were praised for exhilarating pacing and superb gameplay design. Topic. Sales In 1994, Edge reported that both Faces of Evil and Wand of Gamelan had sold a respectable number of units. However, IGN claimed that sales of CDI games including these two were poor and caused them to be readily available years later. Topic: <laughs> Rankings. IGN's Peer Schneider ranked the two games among Nintendo's biggest failures despite the games not being made by Nintendo. Electronic Gaming Monthly contributor Scenebaby ranked Zelda, Wand of Gamelan the sixth worst game of all time, while GameTrailers rated it fifth worst game of all time. The Wand of Gamelan appeared in a bracket poll of The Greatest Legend of Zelda Game, along with Zelda's Adventure. It lost in the first set of rounds to The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. <laughs> See also YouTube Poop, a web animation style in which cutscenes from Faces of Evil and Wand of Gamelan are common.